Listen to the vibes hosted by Coyote Night. Listen in for some positivity and good times. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I have here Mr. Pete Caceres. He's all the way from Australia. And let me tell you a little story about this. I, I, um, I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw these pictures and this guy takes the most remarkable photographs, I swear. And um, anyway, we both kind of share that love for the paranormal. So that's, I think, why he started following my, my first Instagram. And uh, we got to know each other and I was like, man, what kind of camera are you using? But I'm not going to tell you the, the secret. I'm going to let him tell you. But first, let's get to know Pete. So Pete, Pete the Lens, tell us all about, about your wonderful history. Okay. Hello, everyone. Well, my name is Pete, as Kyle's introduced me as. I was um, born in Australia in 1979, but my heritage is from Greece. My dad comes from and uh, Kalamata, where the olives come from, and my mum comes from Limnos, where the Greek cheese comes from. So I used to go to Greek school back in the days when I used to live in Padstow on top of my uncle's chicken shop. And I used to be able to write Greek back then and read Greek and speak it, which I do now, but being not knowing, not I mean, not needing to know that stuff now, I just speak it at home. But I found how to read and write it. But that's all I do at home. I speak it. And I was living in Padstow for about, till I was about, say, 15. Then we moved to Reesby, where we've been living about 23 years now. And I've only started taking photos recently. Um, like Kyle said, I don't use no special camera. What I use is an Oppo R9S Pro. If you search for that on Google, you see a picture. It's one of the early Oppos. And I use a Struman's um, macro lens. A normal one, which is the, uh, one setting 10 times, then I bought another um, Struman's macro lens, which is variable. And then I've got a telescopic lens, which is 21 times zoom, which I use for the yes, moon and stars. My partner's just asked me something. The moon and sorry, and birds, anything in the distance, ships I use. And I come from a family of just one sister. Her name's Vicky. She's married at the moment, and she's been married for a few years. I'm engaged at the moment, been engaged for a few years now. So hopefully one day I'll get married. Yes, so that's my life. I work with um, people with intellectual disability. I've been doing it for now in this job for the company I'm with, with Australian Unity, for four years. Before that, I was with um, another company, which was four years. But before I joined my company now, I was a care worker. I used to go to people's homes. I was um, washing, showering, doing shopping, um, cleaning. And then I, um, my agency sent me to this work where I am now. It was a day program. Mm -hmm. We used to go there. I was with um, First Call Nursing. Then I applied for the job because I thought, look, I'm getting older now. Can't have a day here, day there, doing a few hours. I needed something more stable. So I applied after a while. And then they asked me, where do you want to go? What group? Centre, banks down where I live. Or Cecil Hills, and I went to Cecil Hills, but now we don't have a group home anymore. We're out every day. And the best thing about my job is making the clients happy. You know, a lot of the clients call, are stuck in their home, and the only time they get to see a movie or go bowling is when we take them out. And, you know, like I've said to many organizations I've met over the years, I said, yes, you work for a Ford, I work for Australian Unity, you work for this one, that one. And I said, look, my attitude to my job is, when you work with people with disability, it's about them being happy, going home happy and right. smiling. Because with us, we have individual funding, which is called NDIS, which stands for National Disability Insurance Fund. And each client now gets funding. So before it was wow. us bulk funding. Nowadays, they might come to me, us for a day or two, then might go somewhere else for a day or two. But if they choose not to be like happy, you know, they might say, okay, Australian Unity, goodbye, and you lose a client. That's why my attitude is it's all about the client. Right. Yeah, because you know how good it feels 
um, when you go on holidays for a work call and then you come back and they say, we missed you, Peter. It brings you, uh, such a good feeling to your heart. And that's how I feel with my job, you know. So yeah, Todd, it's... big manager is how I feel about my job. It's all about the clients. I said, yes, I, I work for Australian Unity, but in the end, it's about the clients. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, so about my photos and my, I only started taking photos probably about a year or so. And what started me to use these macro lenses and telescopic lenses, I went to the Easter show last year with two clients, a boyfriend and girlfriend. And we went into the pavilion and this guy had a little stand there with Stream and macro lens, which are based in Melbourne. And I said, how much is one of those worth? And he said, oh, about 200, 100 bucks, depending on what you want. And I showed him some of my photos. I had taken the cheaper macro lens that I bought off eBay and said, look at the quality of this. And that's what made me want to go out and save money to get this stream and macro lens. And ever since then, I saved up and I've been posting a lot of photos. And look, people have what they like. Some people like taking photos of cars or planes or ships. They have some specialty of what they like taking, where go out and take a photo of the clouds or the sun shining through the trees. Or I put the um, my phone against the trunk of a tree without the, any lenses and just face it upwards and take a photo of the tree trunk or put my phone flat on the ground, like take a photo um, of the waves and that. So, every, But most of the time it's just with a macro lens. I do have a wide angle lens. I don't have a fisheye lens, so most of the time it's just macro lens because that's my specialty. I've been up myself, but yeah, using the macro lens. But like I say to anyone out there, you don't need no photo classes, no special um, courses, you just teach yourself and that's what I did just I could go at the backyard now Cole and I'll see a flower like a dandelion flower and I'll take about 10 photos of that flower before I find a good one or I'll take a go in the front yard and when there's a dew like in the afternoon I could take about five different photos before I'm happy it just takes practice anyone out there thinking about taking photos don't think about um, no any photo classes just teach yourself you don't need no special camera like these people that want to sell you a thousand dollar camera or eight hundred dollar camera, just use your phone, get on um, any eBay site or Amazon and type in um, macro lens. Or if you want to take a photo of the moon, just look up a telescopic lens. Yeah, I just love it. You know, that's what I love doing. And and when I'm outside, that's what I'm, I feel like my most calmest because inside you're bored. You know, you're stuck with seeing all these shows on. TV about what's going on in the world coronavirus. So when you're outside, you're breathing the fresh air, your feet are on the ground, you're looking for something to take photos of, whether it be a spider or a bee buzzing on a flower or even a uh, even a weed as a dandelion is and just taking photos or go down to the beach and take photos of waves crashing or go down down the south coast here to the Wollongong break walk hole and there'll be ships, container ships out on the ocean. I'll take a few container ship photos or the lighthouse photos or I'll go on the beach and take a photo of the sand with my macro lens or there might be a shell on the beach I might take a photo of the shell or any pelican flying past and I'll connect my telescopic lens to get the pelicans flying past but or a seagull but usually with the seagulls I'll rip off the telescopic lens and just use the camera phone because they fly so quick if you got to take one with a telescopic lens it'll become a blur so I just use a normal camera on it yeah, but, you know, I enjoy taking photos. And my mum's always saying when the moon's out, oh, you're going out the back again. I said, yeah, mum. I said, I go out there in the, when I first um, see the moon in the afternoon. And then I go out there when it's a bit darker. And then I'll go out there again when it's um, really dark just to get the different photos of the moon because you see more as the afternoon um, progresses. Mm -hmm. That's what I've always enjoyed doing, you know. I'll, but I'm looking to sell my photos. Out there, I've seen some different websites where you can sell them, but you know, I think you have to join. I've tried putting some detail, but they, they need a lot of detail about the photos. But like I said to you, Cole, before we started the show, my friend Trish said, Why don't you go down to Bunnings? Sorry, Office Works out here where you can buy office supplies. Get one of your photos printed and see what it's like on canvas. And that's been a while, so I'd like to do that. You need to, because yeah. you know, I, like I said, whenever I first saw your pictures, I was so blown away mm -hmm. and um, you have an eye for capturing certain yeah. moments, even if yeah. it's like a bee on a, on a, on a petal or mm -hmm. even the flower itself, the, the angles and um, yeah. the backgrounds and 
I, I don't know what it is. You just have this eye yeah. and, and, and anybody out there that's listening or watching this, um, we're, we're going to tell you how to get a hold of, of Pete at the end of the show. And I highly, highly recommend that you get a hold of him. If you want to decorate your home with some beautiful pictures, you need to get a hold of this guy because he is awesome. I mean, you should be like taking pictures for National Geographic or something. Yeah, I've, I've thought about that, Cole. You know, I've thought about contacting like Australian Geographic or National Geographic and saying, how can I share my photos with you? Or even like finding photo competitions because I spoke to a people um, at the shopping center here, Warawong. They've got a camera club. And I, excuse me, asked them about, oh, how do I share my photos? He said, look, we usually do with camera clubs, but there is people on um, Instagram that just use basic phones. And then I followed a few of them people and I've got a couple of them following me. But yeah, with the photos, I just, sometimes I might lay on the ground and phone, um, face my phone up under the dandelion or I'll take it on a side angle view or above view. And I like to type with the macro lens, they come out, it's called a bokeh, where the detail of the um, the flowers there, but the background's faded. It's, that's the type they call, it's called a bokeh shot. Wow. And I used to be on, what was that show? Sorry, um, Cole, what was that app we used to be on before? Just telling Cole, we used to upload for competitions and that, just to get points. Oh, it was a, it was a phone app that we used to use, me and my partner, for a while, and then you'd get points and go up points. But yeah, you, they reckon you could win money, but nothing ha came of that. But it was just good to share my photos in the different categories. Yeah, but not at the moment. Oh. Did, Guru Shot. So one was an app called Guru Shot, and they had categories. And you could sometimes post four photos of a bridge or a train. And we were on that for a while, and you go up through the ranks, and they reckon you could win money in that and share your photos in gallery. But we got bored after a while, so I just got off it. Now I just share my photos on Instagram. And well, so you know, far, Instagram, I've posted about 16,200 photos. Plus, there's videos and those color by numbers that I do, but majority is photos of um, what I've taken. Do, do y'all have those, like, outside markets where people come and they set up tables and they sell their, like, they, they make honey here. If they yeah, make... Those markets down here, flea markets, they got one down the road from my apartment. I think it's every Saturday or every, sorry, Sunday. I think it's every Sunday. You should That's get some good. printed up on canvas and take them yeah. out there. Cause I guarantee you, you're going to sell something. That is those... a good, you know, I've got to put my mind to it and stop talking about doing it. I'm going to do it and do it and just go down to office work or find a photography place. Sorry. That's cheap. And say, look, I want to get this on a small canvas. I reckon you're right, Paul. I will, I'm happy to sell some. That's what, you know, my job is my what I do now, but my passion is photography as well. And putting myself out there, you know, you start off small, with, like you said, flea market, put a few on canvas and say, okay, guys, maybe even start off at small canvas, say 15 bucks, and then you might get someone walking through the flea market that's a professional photographer and say, wow, Pete, we love your photos. And then they might, you know, offer you like a job on the weekend, taking photos for different stuff. Yeah, I mean, you could easily get out there and, you know, just start out small and then get a little bigger and a little bigger. And the next thing you know, man, you're taking off. Yeah. Yeah. So those are those are really beautiful pictures. Sometimes, like, I'll go where my partner, if she's having a nap or whatever, I'll just go, okay, babe, I'm going down to Wollongong Botanic Garden. I'll walk around there, Cole. I'll have my telescopic lens in my photo in case I see a bird but most of the time I walk around and take photos of the different flowers or if I see a bee on the flower or even a ladybug I'll take one of them on the flower or even like um, if the birds are on the grass I'll take the macro lens off and put it flat up on the grass and take a photo of them sitting on the um, grass that looks like I'm on ground level so that's what I like to do go around different places and take photos and that yeah, it's uh, something I really enjoy. But you're right, Cole, you know, the first steps of taking a photo and getting it printed is doing it. It's good to talk about, like I said, but it's good to get out there and actually do it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I know you decided one day you were going to do it, but what, what really got you into that passion of taking photos? I mean, is just that love of nature or what is it? 
love of nature. Love being outdoors. I love love the different colours of the trees in autumn. You get the nice you call it we call it autumn, you call it fall over there, the different oranges and the reds and the browns. And just the planes flying overhead, taking a good photo of a plane. Oh yeah, we me and my partner, sorry, we just said we started this house, so we take started photos of um sunsets and that, then it became like taking photos of um nature and then trees. Sometimes I want to take a photo of car, but most of the time it's a nature stuff. Little lady beetles, bees. Even worms going into the soil. I just love nature. I love being outdoors. You know, look at look at us today. A lot of us are stuck inside watching TV or playing our um, PlayStation. That when we can be outside in nature, getting some fresh air, and that's what makes me want to go outside. I want to be outside. I want to be inside. You know, sometimes when I'm at home, I like to read my books. But most of the time, I'm at home before the sun gets starts going down because it's winter here. For the American listeners over there, we have winter here. The sun goes down by five o'clock, it's going down. So I like to be out in the backyard before then looking for a photo to take of whether it be maybe a bit of um, moss on the cement or a bit of dirt close up or a, you know, a leaf that's got a bit of a disease or it's dying or the, like in my partner's parents' backyard, the skeletons of leaves. That's what I like taking photos of. Man, but you know, the things that you see on social media and the news, everything just, it, it's like doomsday. Yeah, that's so, right. You know, yeah. and people need to be reminded of such things like like nature and your mm-hmm. photos, they yeah. do that. They really yeah. do. It's like there is beauty in this world and mm-hmm. your your eye captures that. Yeah. Do you know how nice it is when I go on Instagram and I see these other um uh, faces and places and um photos that people take like of like these people are full of Bundan Bundanoon um country in motor in. <laughs> They post some beautiful photos of just a fence line. It might be a single tree. And it just makes you smile seeing other people's photos that they share of nature or the ocean or waves crashing or a bird flying. Very mm. relaxing. What people need to do get out there and get off the phones and start getting t- taking pictures of stuff you love. You know, your partner might not like it, but then in the end, they learn to accept it. So that's why my partner said, oh, you're going out and get in the backyard to take a photo. I said, yeah, babe, that's what I love doing. And just accepted that. I go outside or go for a drive. The people should get out there and take photos. Don't be stuck on the TV or on the PlayStation. Even kids, get your kids involved in getting out there with you and taking pictures or going for a drive, even if it's just half an hour away, and find a nice spot where you can take some nice photos. It doesn't have yeah. to be of a particular thing. Just take a photo of anything. You see a bird going to fly overhead, take a photo of that. You see a nice flower, take a photo of that. You know, It doesn't have to be anything particular, and that's how I started. The sunset, then I broadened my range to trees, waves, I take a photo of sh- little shells on the rock, sand on the beach, a lighthouse, you know, a pelican flying past, like I've said, it's planes, and, that's, and then you broaden your range and you don't just stuck, get stuck to one category. Exactly. You know, yeah. it, it's a good escape from all the troubles that we're going through is just to get out and see nature. You yeah, know, that's right. You know what my favorite thing to do? is uh, we have quite a bit of, of animals and stuff around where we live mm. and especially squirrels. Yeah. And the, cool so we, we throw the, these seeds and stuff out on the patio and they come up and they eat the, all the seeds and nuts and all that stuff. And they sit at my back door and they just sit in there, you know, eating. Yeah. If, so for some reason, that's fascinating to me. I love, yeah, I love watching them. Yeah, I love watching birds eating. They look like so smart. I posted some photos on Instagram when I went to Wollongong um, Botanic Gardens where a uh, um, cockatoo is sitting there with its hand, with a uh, finger to something, a nut eating. You know, it's like, the, it's like us, they're picking up something with their hand or their um, claws and then eating it, which is amazing. You know, just watching them, how they eat, or even watching a worm go back into the soil and that, or watching a spider, you know, making its web. Like the, we had the all weaving spiders, or all those jumping spiders, you know. I love watching you know, bees flying around or even a fly, trying to get a good photo of a fly with its eyes placed up. Very fascinating. It, like, it really is. Yeah, and that's what we need to do. We need to get out and stop watching TV, and you know, because that's what causes, I think, sickness. You know, when you watch TV and you see a bombing happen, the 
this happened, you know, coronavirus, and that's what we're bombarded with. You know, there's more things going on in the world today. Get out there and take some photos. Clear your mind, get some air into your front nose, and, you know, start taking some photos and relax yourself, you know. That's what yeah. people do. They, 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 they see this fear and they live in fear of what's going to happen. I don't care. You know, I'm on this world for a limited time. I'm going to get out there and take as many photos as I can. Wow. You know, I'm not on com Instagram to be in competition with everyone who posts the most. I just post whatever I like. And that's how each pe person's Instagram page works. They like taking photos of what they're doing or they like taking photos of themselves. That's their page. My page is all about um, taking photos of what I love, you know, different things. Well, someone needs to discover your photos. Seriously. Yeah, I'd love if someone discovered me, you know, and said, hey, Pete. Wow, how did you start? You want to share some of your photos, or you want to? I want to buy some of your um, photos where I've signed the bottom. You know, that's what I'm looking at selling. Hopefully, one day on Instagram, the photos where I put my signature to on the bottom. That'd be good. But yeah, it's good to be recognised and have someone hopefully one day say, "Oh, Pete, come on, you know, let's get you started on, you know, some printing your photos, or even them offering. Okay, we can help get your photos printed and put it out there to sell." But I think the first step is to like get out there, get down office work. Okay, what do I need to um, print under these photos? And I think like one photo on a small canvas is about 30 bucks, which is nothing. And then maybe you can go and sell it to your friends or just donate it to your family and say, look, put this on the roof, um, not the roof, on the wall, mum, you know, and have it as your first photo that's been printed. It would be to my mum and dad. And have nope. one for, my, and fa for her family on the wall in here. I know that it would cost you money, but you should, because uh, this is something that I learned from a friend of mine, and he's he's a millionaire now. He's mm -hmm. done a lot of stuff yeah. for free just mm -hmm. to get his name out there. That's, and, That's how you start, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and and you should you know get you a canvas made up with one of your best pictures. Find somebody out there, you know that. Mm they might already be rich or something, but you say, you know what? I really like for you to have this. Yeah. And, that's a good and, idea. and you know what? Your, na your name should get out there. Yeah, that is true. Find a photographer, you know, and say, look, you know, this is a photo of did, would you, I'd like you to have it. And then I'm like, and then if they have it in their house, they might have other photographers come over and go, wow, who took this photo? Oh, oh it's on, his name's printed on the bottom, Pete the lens. Let's, Let's try and get in contact with him and get more photos of he's put out there. Yeah. Well, I'm saying you, you just find find some somebody that's rich. Yeah. And yeah. you know they they can afford to buy your picture, but you yeah. go up to them and you say, you know what, I want you to have this. Make yeah. sure your name's on it. And yeah. I, I'm telling you, people yeah. people will start saying, hey, could, I, whenever your pictures show up on my feed. I have to stop and look at them. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Oh, yeah, those yeah. are the you know. And if it was on the wall, it's one of those pictures you can't help but. You, you, I don't care what's on the walls. If it's up there, you're gonna stop and you're gonna say, "Wow." Right. I, know, I know photos look good on a phone, but I'm not being up myself. I reckon, like you said, if it's on a canvas, people walk in the door and they go, "Wow, look how good it looks on the canvas." Why didn't you do it earlier? You know, why didn't you do it when you first said you were gonna do it? But it's <laughs> can see it because with a phone you've got to pull out your phone you've got to go to your instagram or your gallery on your phone and you've got to go okay look at the photos i've, paint, I've taken and with my signature and they go wow but when it's on a canvas on your wall in your house or your friend's house if you give them one or sell them one or your partner's parents house they can walk in the door and you have visitors oh wow oh who's that oh pete the lens took that photo you know and then they might go oh, oh i would like one printed as well and you could offer them okay, what photo do you want? And they might say, okay, we can give you 20 bucks. And then they might tell their friends, you know, if they have theirs, my photo on their wall, they might have friends come over and go, wow, who did that? And then it goes from there like a domino effect. Exactly. You know, I wouldn't have asked you on this show if I didn't believe in your talent because I, I, I've said this before and I've said it a hundred times, you have an eye for taking photos. Yeah. And you have Thank such a perspective that, you know, you, you see photo after photo after photo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's always, 
nature and this kind of stuff. But for some reason, the angles that you take and mm -hmm. the subjects that you, you photograph, mm -hmm. there's just, there's something miraculous about it. Okay. And that's okay. why I said, I need this guy on my show because yeah, you. you're awesome. Oh, that's, that's like I said, looking at photos, looking at stuff, going out in nature is calming. We might go for a drive with my partner through some national park and it's very calming. We might stop at the beach when the waves are like big swirls and we find, listen to the waves smashing against the rocks, very calming. But, you know, it's good to get out in nature. It's, I find taking photos calms me. I'll be in the backyard, I'll walk in, I'll take a photo. Oh, I've seen a dandelion over there, I'll take a photo of that. Then I'll go over there, look up at a photo of an ant walking across old um, um, stormwater depth pipe, in, you know, that's for the house. Walk, I'll take a photo of that. Then I'll take a photo of a lavender, or I might see a bee on the lavender, or when the lady beetles, which one? Yeah, or a lady beetle on the lavender, or when they were coming out before, you know, I'd take a few of different angles of a lady beetle, or even a video using my macro lens and post it on Instagram. <laughs> It, it's beyond words because when I see some of those photos, like when you're on the beach and all that, I actually feel like I'm there. You know, yeah, that's, that's what I try and do when I take photos, make people feel like they're there with me at that time, taking that photo, which is awesome. You know, so I like to take the different angles so people can go, wow, it feels like I'm really there. Really, I feel like I'm really that close to the object, whether it be a bee he's taking a photo of, you know. And that's mm -hmm. what I try and put, put the people in perspective of what I'm taking a photo of. And that's why I might take one, you'll see, I'll take one, uh, say, lavender front on, then I might take a close-up of the two flowers, then I might take a top view, and then I might take one from below, just to give the different angles and perspectives of the lavender flower. So it's not just a front on, it's close-up, a bit far away, at a different angle, maybe from a bit of a bottom angle. Man. So, do you take requests for photos? I'd love to, no, I don't, I'd love to take requests, but I don't take any requests. If someone wants a request, I could take a few requests, like of a lavender flower, but I just take photos of whatever. I haven't had any requests yet, but you know, maybe one day I'll have requests to have. Yeah, never thought of it, Kyle. Really, of taking requests, but that's a good point. Maybe I could put myself out there for people listening to this after it's posted on. Um, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and YouTube to take requests and yeah, take some photos, put my name to it, and I can send it to them for free or they can, if they want to pay a little fee, whether it be like $10 or whatever, you know, that's a good idea, Kyle. Yeah. Well, I have a request. Can you go take pictures of the guys from the Hoodoo Gurus? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah that's right you love the hero gurus that's right if you get a picture of them i'll pay you good money for it that'd be good eh? <laughs> that'd be good, eh? message hero guru say look i've got a mate in america he wants a photo of you can i take a photo that's yes yeah, because remember Cole like the hero gurus that's why i just tell him my partner yeah that's right that's man my partner um Pam said she, she didn't think you'd know who hero gurus was over there and Stone Age Romeos, Mars and these guitars. Uh, wow. I mean, gosh, what's the other one? Uh, Blow Your Cool. Wow. Oh, yeah. I, I love the hoodoos, man. Yeah. Well, Pamela said, you know more than she does. And we're <laughs> Australian. But that's how it works with bands. They put themselves out there, they travel the world, or they get on the station, and people listen to them, whether it be in Asia, Europe, you know, Africa. You know, you tell them in some countries, oh, have you heard of ACDC? Yeah, and they might be like over the other side of the world in China or, you know, India. And a lot of people know a lot of bands, whether it be American bands or Australian bands or any nationality. In Excess is very popular. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love In Excess too. Yeah. Even nowadays with the new, new singer that's been around for a while now since Michael Hutchinson died, he's very good, you know. Yeah, I, that was sad because I I love to listen to him sing. Just something yeah. about that band, man, they were awesome. Yeah, I used to love listening to ACDC. Then that guy um was going deaf, and they said, "Look, you can either continue with ACDC or you can go deaf." But I've seen him on a car show. Really? What's his name? 
the guy from ACDC. Uh, and Johnson? Yeah, Johnson. Yeah. He's in the car show now, and he still wears that hat on his head and that. Yeah. But I think the other guy, one of them's got dementia now. I think the one that used to um, wear the schoolboy school uniform. No, that uniform. was his, it was his brother. Oh. Yeah. Where? Uh, his last name's Young. I can't think of his first name right now. Is it? Are they brothers? The singer, Bon. Um, the the guy that the guy that wears this the school uniform, Angus Young. His brother yeah. plays rhythm guitar, and his brother's the one that has dementia. Oh, his brother's got dementia, not Angus Young. Oh, where well, that's that, eh? Yeah, I think it's his yeah. brother. I'm yeah. pretty sure it is. If not, it's his cousin. Yeah. They <laughs> they're related. But when um Axel Rose fronted for ACDC for not long. And he had a broken leg, and that he sounded all right, but not the same, you know. Uh, it didn't. It didn't mi mix for me. I didn't like it. The same with um the guy who is fronted for from Screaming Jet. Who did he front for, babe? The guy from Screaming Jet. He fronted for someone. You remember he passed away, and then Screaming Jet's lead singer fronted for him. I don't know if you've heard of him. What is it? That's all right. You're having a blank moment. That's all right. Blank moments are allowed for. Hey, when yeah. we're when you get our age, you, you just you have can't remember you nothing. Have to blank moments. <laughs> you something and you go, oh, what was it? I was supposed to say, come on, babe, remind me. I said, I don't know. I can't. She said, how come? When I always forget something, you forget as well. I said, I don't know. That's what happens when you're a couple. If you forget <laughs> something, I forget it too. <laughs> well, see, I'm gonna make myself old here but i was in third grade when you were born well yep he's young Carl. that's what happens when you got a full set of hair you still look young <laughs> i'm 50. well happy 50th that's cool you look still young well thank you three you grandkids look, that's good yeah got three grandbabies It'd probably keep you a lot occupied running around and that. That's why I need to get this surgery done so I can run around with them again. Yeah, that'd be good, you know, help you out a bit. Yeah, at least you're keeping occupied by doing all these podcasts and interviewing people keeps your mind occupied. You know, oh, man. Keeps you, yeah, keeps your well, mind off surgery at the moment and that. Now, I love this because I love getting people on that have mm -hmm. a story to tell and. Yeah might be an inspiration for other people and mm. um we can repeat this again but on instagram it's yeah. pete pete underscore the underscore lens and um look him up and just look at the photos just take my word for it you need to look at his photos and you'll see what i'm talking about um, I, I i have no words because they're just they're gorgeous man they really are that's how you make friends as well. Like I've become good friends with you because I started following you because of your paranormal stuff, and then then you be followed me because my photos, and we become good friends. And you're on another side of the world, and I'd like to come over there and meet you yourself and um, KD. You are two good friends that I've met through Instagram. I'm very happy to know you and be part of your lives as friends. You know, and so cool. it's good to chat and see how you're going or what you're up to or how things are going with you. And that that's the best way to make friends. You know, put yourself out there. You see people. Like kids, they make friends via these games by putting on a headset and talking to someone. But then when they like get out there, they have anxiety because they don't know how to talk to people face to face. They know how to text. So I remember one day a few years ago when my partner lived down where her brother lives, there was a guy at the shop and there was a girl at the steps of a house next door. Like they had a front yard, then she was at the next door. And I'm looking at him texting. And I said to him, are you texting her over there? He said, yeah. I said, why wouldn't you call her over? And that's what kids are like. So they, yeah, right next door. And he's texting that. And she's looking over there, texting back. I'm thinking, you know, that's what kids are like. They've got a social anxiety, so to say, because we're stuck on the phone, talking to people on the phone. I've seen when I've gone to a club, you see two couples sitting there. And what are they doing? Texting. Yeah. I remember we went down before coronavirus sometime last year, my partner. And her mum, we took her out for, I think it was her birthday, Mother's Day, walking past the table, four friends at the table, at this slow table where you can sit on the nice lounge there, Cole, and they're all on the phone. 
And I'm thinking, why would you go out somewhere to a club for, for a coffee to sit on your phone? If you're going to sit on your phone, do it at home. Exactly. Yeah. You know, this world, there, there's a division, seems like, right now. Mm. And the problem is, is people don't have one-on-one -on -one talks. Yeah. You know? That's right. Yeah. I mean, right now, I know we had, have all this coronavirus lockdown and they, they want social distancing and all that, but take the time, get on your computer yeah. and talk like we're talking yeah. and get to know people. And I have got to know so many wonderful people from, yeah. you know, different backgrounds, different cultures, you know, and when you get to know someone, you can become real friends. Right. And look, you can talk to someone, but you make it more of a connection when you see that person through a video call. Mm -hmm. You know, someone might type your message and you might think they had the shits or they might think you have the shits because, like they say, you can't read emotion in a message. Exactly. You've got a video chat, someone's upset, you know, you can see it by their facial expressions or their tears in their eyes or they're angry about something. Whereas a um, message, you can't read it. You know, they might use an explanation or they might make um, use big letters or capitals and you think, oh, this person's got the shit or they're upset, but the, that's the way they type message. Whereas if they take the time to give you a video call, you give a video call, see how you're going, then you can see what's going on. Oh, this, my friend's upset or something's bothering or they might have lost something or, you know, they might have lost a job or they might have gotten a new job and they're happy to share it. And you can see that through uh, through a video call. And that's what more people need to do. Do what we're doing. Get on the phone and video call your friends. Then just call them on to hear their voice. Get on, um, you know, an app which allows you to show their face, which many people probably have an app where, and make the video call and see how your friends are going. Oh, yeah. I've made some great friends through this whole um, lockdown because yeah. we get to sit down and, and talk to each other and you, you know what i really hate is when you s type out a message you know you're texting somebody or you're tweeting something or you're putting something on instagram facebook whatever it is and you're you're thinking at the moment is this is how this is what i mean but sometimes what you what you write is not exact i mean it could be taken a different way yeah you know that's what i mean so you, yeah. you don't you don't know what the context is mm. when you're when you're typing. You have yeah. to talk. Yeah, that's right. Or you have to see that person because yes, some people get offended, and you have to tell them I didn't mean it like that. And exactly. Says, oh, sorry, it came across like that. That's why it's good to pick up the phone, get on a video call, and then you can talk things out. Oh, okay, how are you feeling today? I had a shit day at work. You know what happened, and then you're able to see and give them advice and type in a message, okay, what happened at work? And then they type back and backwards and forwards. And it, it's time consuming texting. That's what's better to get on the phone, you know, and talk on the phone or video call someone. Exactly. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times I've had to apologize because the way I, I wrote it was not the way that I meant it. You know, yeah, that's, yeah, that's I'm, right. you, yeah. I'm thinking, Oh man, this is funny. I'm going to tell yeah. them like this and, you know, they think it's a joke and then they get offended because they don't realize yeah. you're joking, you know? Yeah. I might get a message saying, oh, I just got offended and you have to reply back saying, oh, sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Yeah. The good old fashioned talking to people. That's what, yeah. that's what we need. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it'd be in the good old fashioned, write someone a letter than sending someone an email it has more meaning to it when you write a letter because they see your wording, how you've written the, letter with a pen than just emailing someone there's no emotion in the email there's more emotion when you write a letter you know you can see the person the way they write if it's running writing or so and so you know yeah it's funny how actually sitting down and writing out stuff it it it, it seems like it comes out better than yeah. when you sit there and type and i don't know why that's it's i mean you're doing the same thing but it is yeah. different it is yeah. it really is that's what someone said about, um, I was listening to the radio when I went to the chemist for my partner to get some of her medication for her dad. He said, when you get on the bus nowadays, you tap on. Before you used to pay a fare, 
and they, they you to tap on and you tap off and a lot of people don't say um thank you but i'm always saying thank you you know when i'm on the bus and i with a client before i tap on the client would tap on i say thank you or holding the door open for someone or if someone drops excuse me it's um like the shopping or drop some coins it's good to help out and that's what i believe help out each other you know <laughs> this is this is gonna sound really silly mm. but in some cities on their buses they actually have signs up that tell people that don't text 911 you have to actually call 911 which is our yeah. emergency which is our emergency number. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I see it on the show's 911. That's better. I've never but heard of that texting song yet. They say, don't text, because you're going to text 911. Ain't nobody going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good one. Yeah, that, that's a good one, yeah. <laughs> if a kid or someone that didn't know to use a phone because they were too lazy to um, pick up a phone and they texted 911 help, they're not going to get a reply back. It's nope. like if someone texted triple zero help and then i was going to reply back you have to get on the phone at all that's triple zero is what we have over here in australia when emergency number wow yeah do we even have operators anymore um i guess we do for us we do if we ring up triple zero they say police fire ambulance you know and we've seen um on a current affair which is a, like a news type program where they said it, how many hundreds of um, fake calls where they've had calls, and this is a true but stupid one. They've called, I think, an ambulance to go pick up some pizza for them. Oh Lord! That's Seriously? The, yep. Yeah, someone's dying. You're having these idiots doing these prank uh, calls for someone to go pick up a pizza, you know, or to pick them up and drop them off at their friend's house. Yep, they are uh, that. Did these triple zero calls, Paul? Because, you know, I remember as a kid, you'd get on the phone, and if you didn't know somebody's number and you didn't have a phone book, you just dial zero, and you get yeah. an operator, and you're like, hey, um, uh, my friend so-and-so, he lives on such-and-such -such street, um, can I get his number? And they'll be like, oh, do, would you like me to direct your number? Yes, I think I remember that as a kid as well. I don't know if they do that anymore, because you could just Google yeah. or whatever but nowadays. They've got yellow pages, which is, um, or white pages that, which has people's number and you can go, um, it's like, but you do have the white pages book where you have to search for stuff. A lot of people are becoming lazy. They'll go white pages on Google, which is in Australia. And I'll type in the person's name where as I'd like to go, if I was, it was me, I'd go on white pages and look through it for myself and go, okay, Jane, so, and so, and go through the book and flick through the pages, not, but, you know, what do you have over there? Do you have anything like that? Call we get out, send out a white pages with everyone's um, name and number in it. Oh yeah, we still get the book. They oh, still, still get. Yeah, about uh, every few months, somebody will toss a, a book on the front porch. We have two. We have white pages which has people's names and addresses, and we've got yellow pages which is a business business numbers like plumbers and all those different stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah, we still yeah. get that. A lot of people just go on Google and type it, which is they reckon quicker, but I'd rather just search for a book if I'm looking <laughs> for something. It's sure a lot different than when we were kids. <laughs> yeah. You never have phone boxes back in the days? You go to a phone box and ring your friend? Right. And yeah. I, you know, for some reason, we were always able to get a, a ride from our parents, no yeah. matter where we were at, because you could, yeah. you know, you always knew how to get a hold of them. Yeah, I remember back in the days we used to have phone boxes. Most streets you'd walk around and have a phone box. You go put in your coins and you ring your friend. Nowadays they're like a rare species phone box. You hardly see them anymore. Yeah, I think I've probably seen two in mm -hmm. in the last, you know, what, twenty years or so. Yeah, you don't see many anymore, which is sad. And everyone's on their mobile phone. It's sad that's what like you see a lot of elderly people, they don't want to go into a to an ATM and take out money. They want to go face to face. And that's what they're trying to push people. Get rid of, um, you know, face to face and get people going to the um, ATMs. And that's, you know, when we go to the grocery store and you mm -hmm. got the self checkout lines, yeah. I, I refuse to go to those. I like to go to a cashier because I want to be 
I want to interact with a human being, not with the computer, you know? Thank you. Oh, you're like me because you know why? If I have to have to get to a self-serve, okay, but my heart wants to go to someone because they get paid to do a job. Exactly. The machine can do whatever. It's, it doesn't get paid, the machine. It doesn't complain for payment. You go to someone and you pay them and you can have a talk and they talk to you about how your day been or, you know, what the weather's been like or whatever. You know, they like to conversate. Where a machine you don't talk to unless it's peeing you off and not um, giving you the right amount that you have to pay. It's charging you more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, like yeah. Talk to people. Don't. I know self serves quicker, but I'm happy to wait in a line if I've got a few things, you know, and talk to someone and get them to scan the stuff and put it in a bag because that's their job. You know, they're a cashier. Exactly. That's like when you when you call businesses and you have to go through the, you know, uh, which department are you looking for? Such and such department, press one. Such and such department, press two. Press three. I want to talk to a human being. Just put a human being on the phone. Yeah, I remember back in the days when you used to ring up someone and you get put through to them straight away. Now it's press one or this, press two, or please tell us what department. And you, t- you say what department and the bloody voice thing's not recognizing what department. Please speak, um, try again and tell us what department you're looking for. Oh, and they, keep, and they make you start again and again. And you start swearing, and you start getting the shits and you just hang up and you give up. <laughs> it's so <laughs> aggravating. Yeah, and I've, I've had many times where I've gotten through to a lady or a gentleman and they said, what's wrong with your voice recognition stuff? It's asking me what department or what I'm looking for and I constantly tell them, I said, you really need to fix it. You know, they might say it's quicker to press one and, um, okay, what department? And you say to the voice activator, okay, putting you through now, but why? Sometimes it's 10 times you have to say before you, you know, they, they understand what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I miss the good old days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we go to my friend's house on a Saturday night and I have a few drinks. I'll drive there, my partner, Pam drives home. And I'll say to the kids, well, back in our days, we used to listen to radio cassettes and we had a cassette player. And they go, what's that? Uh-huh. <laughs> and they had no, there you feel like an old fart. Hey. They just get on their phone and they go onto Spotify and type in a tune or they go onto internet, listen, you know. Dude, my, my second car that I bought when I was a teenager actually still had an eight track player in it. Wow. That's cool. Yes. I had, yeah. What's I had, an eight track call? Is that a cassette player? It's it's like a cassette, it but um it was the, the big ones. They're oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're about that big and it had yeah. tape in it just like that. Yeah. And um I I had three of them that I played. Yeah. One of them was Van Halen. One of them was the Doobie Brothers. And the other one was Leonard Skinner. Wow. <laughs> well, these cars now don't even have CD players, Cole. They've got Bluetooth or USB. A lot of the new cars, if you buy one, they don't have CD players anymore. I know. So, they're. I, I'm seeing cars not made with CD players anymore. They just... Yeah, a lot of them don't have CD players anymore, which is sad. I like CDs. I've got two CD cases. I still have my old car. And I've got a CD plan there, and I don't look at, I'm not going to look at upgrading for a long time. You know, because one day they won't be making CDs anymore. And people go, well, everything's USB or Bluetooth. Yeah. Um, I think I was 13, 14, somewhere around there when CDs first came out. Yeah. And wow. Man, and there was, that was like the coolest thing in the world. Oh, I got a yeah. CD, and we yeah. thought, man, they can't get any better than this. And now you don't even have to have, I mean, everything's yeah. on your phone. Yeah. And even before um, CDs, remember the VHS video players before mm. CD players and you'd watch a movie on the VHS? Oh, yeah. yeah. Very bulky in that, yep. That was good back in the days. I still remember people having uh, betas. <laughs> 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 it's just like a VHS. It was just a different kind of cassette. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Beta. Oh beta. Yes, we. I know what they are now. Yes, yes. That's why yeah. technology is good, but it's made us distance ourselves from people and not have to talk to anyone or interact with anyone. I know. I'm. I miss going to the old record stores all the time. And 
I mean, there's still record stores around, but it's just not like it was when we were kids. Well, things now you can buy um, CDs off eBay and that. Sometimes I'll go to a shop or JB Hi-Fi, which we have down here, which sells TVs and DVDs and all that stuff, or I'll get a CD off eBay. Yeah. You get on YouTube sometimes or watch a video on YouTube. Oh, yeah. You can do everything from your phone or your television now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, smart TVs and that, watching internet off smart TVs and that. Yeah. Yeah, and then they're watching you. That's right. That's Sweet. what I've heard. That is true because I've seen on the current affair here that news program where they're saying you've got to be careful of these smart TVs because you might think, oh, okay, I'm searching for something. They've got a camera there, but they're watching you. And it says with some of the TVs, I think Samsung and that, be careful because we watch you as well and use it for something. Um, I'm not sure what they use it for, but I sort of read and heard with some so, TV companies, they watch you as well and they use it to improve their services. So well, be careful with the smart TV. Let me give you some advice. Oh. Always be wearing your pants when you're watching television. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they don't want to have it sitting there in your undies or sitting or naked. Yeah, that's what I just said. Even with the coronavirus, they're watching you as well. Mm -hmm. Man, do you realize that we just we got so off our off our uh, subject? We that's just start right. talking about the good old days. Yeah, that's right. Good old days. Good to talk about the good old days. So the people that are young people that will hopefully listen to this will understand what it was like for us growing up. Oh yeah. You know, what that's what it was like growing up. Oh, believe me, I could have a whole podcast just talking about the things we did when we yeah. were kids. Yeah, the good old days with Cole Yates. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. believe it or not, our time is up, brother. Yeah, we're going for lunch soon, so we're just going to get ready. But, yeah, I feel very privileged to have this interview with you today, Cole, or Thank tonight you. over there and today here. Yeah. So, I just want to say if one's listening out there, and hopefully you'll be listening any photographers, my name is Instagram page is called Pete underscore the lens or underscore. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, feel free. Or if you want to purchase the photo, I've got a lot of photos on there that I'm happy to upload that are signed. And then, you know, just feel free. I'm happy to follow anyone. But yeah, photographers or anyone that's interested in what I'm interested in photos, being friendly, spiritual stuff, photography, feel free to follow me on my Instagram page. Yes, please. Uh, I'm telling you, you will not regret it. I am not exaggerating. These these photos are awesome. They are gorgeous. Uh, there's so I, I can't even get the words that, that how wonderful these pictures are. So uh, I, I have lushed over you probably enough. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carl. No, I appreciate you know when it's nice. Like I said, when people appreciate you for your photos and they go, "Wow, the wow fact." That's what I hope for when I take my pictures. They when I post them. People go, wow, amazing photo. I've had many comments where my friends on Instagram go, wow, amazing photo, Pete. Love your photos. And I've had friends that go, oh, always look photo. Sorry, not always look photo. Always look um, forward to seeing your photos on Instagram. It's nice to have people comment and like your photos. And that's what it's all about. To the kids out there and the young ones, get out there with your phone and start taking photos, not just using it to play um, games on your phone, you know, and talk to your friends. Get out there. Get yourself a little cheap um, telescopic lens or a macro lens off eBay or Amazon over there and get out there and take photos and spread the word of nature to people, you know, that are always stuck inside that have, that can't get out. You know, if you're able to get out, get out in nature and take photos. Or even if you're out with your friends or your family on a drive and you see something nice, a nice scene, tell your mum to pull over or your dad and get out there to take a photo and post it on Instagram or Facebook so people exactly. can see what the area you live in and what it's like where you live, you know, the nice places. Yes. And I love seeing all the places in Australia. I'm, I'm ready to go visit. Yeah. that would be good for you to visit or me to go visit over there one day. You know, it'd be good to see you face to face and, you know, give you a, a big hug and thank you for all the help you did. You know, when we're allowed to be traveling again. <laughs> and then yeah. you're going to find the Huda gurus for me. Yeah, that's it. I'll message him and say, look, I've got a good fan big fan over here that'd yeah, be good i'd like to try and google them and say look i've got a massive fan you know would it be possible to have a photo taken hey if you can do it i'll pay yeah. for it yeah i'll have a look around in that for your call thank you
Yeah, and, I, and I would like to thank everybody that's joined us. Uh, we appreciate your support and I hope you enjoy these. Um, I, I like to give a platform for people to, you know, talk about themselves, you know, get sure. themselves out there. So, you know, you, you can meet these wonderful people like I have. Yeah. So, you know, keep tuning in. We're going to continue to have great guests on here. I promise you. So take care and come back. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at the Vibes Broadcast Network and on Instagram at the Vibes Broadcast. Broadcast.